Hey, Kai, how's it going? Good, how are you, Hamlet? Good, good. So, yeah, I um, just want to show you how this uh, DES for Avaya works and how to set it up. So I'm just going to explain basically the moving parts. Let me uh, share my screen real quick. Perfect. All right. All right, so here is the PBX, Radio PBX screen, and I am now at an extension level. So first thing as usual, you want to add the MAC address of the Avaya unit here. Okay. <clears throat> and leave proposed SIP transport as is. And then um, we're going to invoke a start timer for that unit. And that's all we have to do on the body PBX. Next, um, we're going to go into the DES for Avaya. And you there are some steps that you have to follow um here to get this to work with your avaya unit so the first thing we need to do is create a profile in the profile management basically you're going to create your pbx um, profile here so if you have different customers with different dns's then you can set them up accordingly here so first set up your dns i have set mines up already um <clears throat> next uh you want to set up um a customer. So right now I am the service provider and I just created a customer called Colado Telecom. And if you go in it, once you create it, it's gonna ask you, you have two tabs, it's gonna say, okay, this is your customer's information. And then next you have the site. So the site basically is um, a profile for the customer, like you're auto assigning a profile for them. And the way that looks is Basically, um, the customer you're assigning, you can also have a PID number. Uh, basically, it's an enrollment code for the phone. So you can set that up. That's random. Uh, you don't really need to put something there because we're not going to use enrollment code. But you can add one here just to fulfill the, the need here for the next step. Then uh, we can go to firmware. And this is the, a really cool part because... I can say um, firmware upgrade on, and then I can go to my J100s and say all. So the cool thing about the J100s is that it'll take care of all the devices that you claim on the Avaya enrollment. So I'm just gonna choose this and any J100 series phone that connect to the DES will get updated automatically. Um, so next we're gonna go to site management profile here is where um, you can create it's basically the same as the account profile above so this is already done we've already done this part the next thing we're going to do is claim a device so you go here and it's going to ask you for the serial number so let's put the serial number here and then the mac and then you confirm to claim. So now it's success. Now we can go to manage device. And here's the device that I want to work with today. It's a J139. Uh, I've already claimed another one, J79. So if I click on this device, first thing you need to do is activate it. Mm -hmm. So you can use it. Okay, so now it's ready to be used. And then we're gonna associate this a device to an account. So I'm gonna do it to Coyota Telecom, which is quote unquote, my customer. And then the site I'm gonna use is my tenant name, PBX or Audio Mercy. So now I've successfully added that device. You can see here, um, uh, it has the provisioning URL and also the firmware we're gonna provide the phone. So technically now, um, oh yeah, also, just to be uniform, it's good to create a label management. Just Let me ask you this. Um, what is the process like for one of our partners? Let's say they want to um, get a DES account. Is that just a matter of contacting their sales manager at Avaya? Um, I think you can sign up with Avaya. Um, since we're a service, service provider, provider, correct. we can probably provide an account if you wanted to test the DES, and then if they wanted to investigate and get their own account, they can do
do that as well. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so label management, just create a label. Um, it's pretty much you can go to your phone. It's going to be a label you can set. It's not a prerequisite, but like, for example, here it has PBX Mercy. You want to be a little uniform. Um, like I can say associate device with label. And then I'm going to choose PBX Audio Mercy so I know that it's associated to that tenant. Right. So the next thing I'm going to do is um, I have a J139 here. I don't know if you can see the screen, yep. I'm going to attempt to cancel. First, I'm going to see if it, if it talks to the server first, now that we initiated the Yeah, the so you're doing something. Yep, we're waiting for DACP. Perfect. So we might have to power cycle it once, uh, just because I didn't put any enrollment ID, which I don't think... And didn't you mention, any. like, during this provisioning process, we're, you're going to be notified via email of the um, events that's taking place. Right. Uh, that's pretty it, neat, too. Yes, you do get emails from the server. BS support is an example. Congratulations, la, la, la. You claim the device. So that's like uh, the first email you get from them that, tell, that tells you that the device is ready to, to get... Uh, Get it together. So it's still waiting for DATP. Um, so if it does take a while, we can forward this video, and um, so we can show you how it goes. Another thing you can do, um, you can also check the tab for the extension. That now the phone hasn't reached the server yet, so we'll just give it a few more seconds. Okay, just gonna take a look. And it says into provisioning details. I don't think I have to. I'm going to press cancel. OK, so this is what I meant from the beginning. So I'm going to power cycle it once. The phone is reset. So let's start from the beginning here. It does take a while. Avaya, once it provisions, it will reboot and, um, and provision itself. So. All right, here you go. There she is, coming up. You can see the logo has been updated and the extensions on the side. Also, you see the BLFs on the button. Um, she's pretty pretty much ready to go. Uh, if in some cases, it might reboot, and that's OK that it reboot. So if I call this unit, you can see it also has a ringtone that I've added. Check, check. One, two, one, two. And that's how you provision your unit using the DES. Now, uh, the last step, just to be sure, because this was a trial and error, um, just make sure when the phone comes up, make sure it's reset, first of all. And when it comes up to ask you about if you want to auto provision the unit, just say yes. If it times out, I think it'll try to go out anyway to the uh, DES and, and and get this config file from the body of PBX. If we go to the PBX, we can see that we've provided the uh, files for the unit and we have a successful registration as well on here. All right, here's our Avaya J139. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video, Kyle. Um, we Great video. Out. And uh, yeah, we'll put it up for you guys and um, you guys can try it out. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Kyle.